Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Amit Chaudhary. I'm the uh, I'm the host and your uh, host and the founder of the Apex Hour. And my, I'm a Salesforce MVP and my co-host is Jitendra Jha. So let me hand over Jitendra for his introduction. Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining uh, today's Apex Hour and Apex Demo Jam. And thanks Amit for giving me an opportunity uh, to host today's session. My name is Jitendra Jha. I am a Salesforce MVP, Salesforce Technical Architect uh, in the ecosystem from the last 10 years. Yeah, Amit, uh, to you. Yeah, thank you. So in the meantime, you guys are here. Feel free to uh, do the social media, tweet and everything, and you can use the hashtag Apex, Demo, Apex Hour Demo Jam. And today we have like six exciting company who is going to uh, showcase their product. So we have uh, can it, uh, we have the sh uh, sharing picks, deselect, SMS three sixty, as Excel Connect, BOF, and the form assembly. And uh, here is the rule. So we have a very simple rule for all the participant who is going to participate here. So you will be get three minute, no slide. And good thing is that at the end our audience will be select one winner. So with that said, I will be hand over to Jitendra. Awesome. So uh, first of all, uh, thanks to all the uh, presenters today. Best of luck. And uh, first step for today's uh, demo jam is sharing picks. Uh, this is the image management for any Salesforce implementation. Uh, whatever you want to do with the images in Salesforce. Sharing picks uh, basically have uh, lightning component for that. So from retail execution to field service, uh, from marketing to customer care and sharing packs covers all the images, uh, image use cases in the Salesforce, uh, including unlimited storage, optimized mobile usage, uh, including a product like Salesforce app, field service lightning, offline support, editing, annotation directly from record page on any device uh, using Einstein image recognition. So. I will hand it over to my friend, Jay Mikhail. Uh, it's all up to you. Okay, I'm ready. And you, you, you give me the go for the three minutes, correct? Yes. Amit, you are counting? Yes. Amit, Amit is yeah. on mute. <laughs> yeah, you, you can go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let me know when you start. Are we starting? Yeah. Time starts now. Okay, perfect. So everybody knows about uh, sharing pics and, and, and we are image experts and we do a lot of uh, around images. Uh, but uh, we have learned a lot about annotations as well. And, and we have made crazy uh, new things that is coming, uh, such as this uh, sharing pics map, which is uh, built on a Google map on which you can make annotation. And those annotation could be done directly on different records because as, as, as an example, here you got the mostly center and you got different uh, buildings and one of those buildings could be part of the annotation. And you can know annotation map, and you can know annotate also PDF. As an example, in the tower, you will have a plan uh, of, of an of a lever of, the, of a tower, and you can have sections that could be objects in your sales force. And you can also automate uh, things like uh, uh, bring uh, an image template and, and make annotation um, ready, so you can place, as an example, that solar panel to explain where this um, uh, inspection of a solar panel can, uh, can, can take place. But you know what? What I would like to do is to create a very good experience. What about if I, in less than two minutes, but th this is what I left, oh, less than two minutes, I can maybe create a crazy mobile experience with images and then uh, copy images to reach it could be interesting. And what about if I create a PDF including images using only sharing pics as well? Let's try to do that. So I go on the record and right away I can use a sharing pics app online in component to make that available directly on the mobile. So you can upload picture, manage picture, make annotation, etc. If you want to copy images to the rich text, you just have to add a button from sharing pics. And then you can choose where it's going to be placed, the size of the image you want, uh, what's going to come as a legend, and maybe the number of columns that you will add in that. And if you, if you want to create a PDF, that's going to be that easy as well. So to generate a PDF with sharing pics, it's one again, you, cho you choose the size of the image, the number of columns that you want, um, a rich text. For the, for the first page, and also a description that could be a formula field. And then you can add this kind of experience where you can see images, you can select some images. In one click, those images will be resized, and boom, 
you got that on the rich text field. And if you want to select more images and generate a PDF with a button where you just created, that's it. You just click here and the PDF is created. That takes some time. Okay, I must admit, no developers were armed in the making of that demo. I made that by myself in less than 30 minutes of configuration only. And you can have this kind of crazy PDF created with images right away. So you know what? If you want to do that in your flows, it works also. On community, it works also. On any page, on any Salesforce objects, custom or uh, standard object. And it works also on FSL and of course in, uh, in, in the Salesforce mobile app. So go on the app exchange and give it a trial now. Awesome. You are almost on time. So that is an awesome app. Yes. There is a new thing coming. There's the Shurmpix map on top of Google map. You can now make annotation right away there and make that available on any and working also on mobile. Awesome. Yeah. So that, that is a cool demo, uh, Jemikel. I'm really impressed by the app. Hopefully all the participants also got impressed, but a uh, story just began. We have five more apps to go on. So uh, thanks, Mikhail. Uh, we will hope best of luck for the uh, voting round. Next app that we are going to talk about 360 SMS app and the presenter is going to be Sonam. So 360 SMS is a one stop text messaging and WhatsApp solution for Salesforce. Uh, the app empowers users to communicate effectively with customers and the business partners and allows market and the sales users to batch text uh, and enable administrators to automate trigger text messages and even automate the responses. Now be amazed by the response rate with 360 SMS for Salesforce. So uh, Sonam, would you like uh, to start sharing your screen? Go ahead and I will start my timer again once you are ready. Okay. So, yeah. Sharing my screen. Yep. So I'm all set. So hi everyone. Uh, yeah. Okay. I need your to record it. Yeah, your time starts now, Sonam. Okay. Cool. So talking about SMS app, we have evolved to WhatsApp. Now the use case that I'm going to show you today is going to be more towards WhatsApp and how you actually use it in customer service. I'm going to go ahead and add myself up in my customer database and shoot myself a message. Now, as a customer on my phone, I get to see my company is actually registered on WhatsApp. How can I actually go ahead and talk to these people on WhatsApp now? So I'll actually go ahead and raise a case. Hey, I need help. I just type it on my phone. So as soon as I do it, I get to see that in Salesforce. It, it all comes in immediately. I get an alert automatically. You see, Bobby Byers actually texting you. And now you see there's a handsome guy who's looking at my, at my issue. So a case has been created and now I also get to see who's the person who is, uh, you know, looking at my use case and then it goes down from there. Now this use case, this image thing is very important because, you know, usually you have lonely housewives who have to take care of, you know, uh, they don't want to be disturbed by people who are coming to their houses. So maybe it's a plumber who's coming to fix an issue. It's, it's an electronics guy. So you get to see who all is coming to your home. So now a new case was created as soon as Bobby Wire you know, um, got in the case. So now I have this entire case conversation with me. It's, it's all the same Salesforce layout. And now as a customer support agent, probably I should not be going ahead and, you know, typing messages on my own. I use my templates. We all do with customer support, right? So I'm going to go ahead and use a template. So appointment. So why don't I go ahead and set a meeting with this guy? at this time oops yeah so will it be fine if i set a meeting for you yes go ahead set a meeting for me perfect awesome now the app actually created a meeting for me it created an appointment if i go ahead and refresh my page it's going to go ahead and create an activity for me it shooted out a message saying my appointment has been booked for tomorrow and here is the meeting ID. Now, my entire case has been done me as a support agent. I did my job. I'm gonna go ahead and close this case. So you'll see. I'm gonna update the status from new 
to closed and save it. Now you can see the previous meeting that I was talking about, the app did it for me automatically. My case has been closed. I actually get to see that my case has been closed. Now, important thing with support is that you need to gather feedback. Usually we are habitual of getting an email when you know the support issue has been fixed or we get a call. What I've done is be a little smart and I'm gonna go ahead and actually drop down a series of messages to these people asking about feedback. Yeah, time's up, Sonam. So three minutes is gone, but awesome product and awesome use case. So uh, uh, yeah. great performance, Sonam. Uh, uh, best of luck for your voting round. Hope all the yeah. participants understood the use case and how useful this app could be. Uh, I will go to our uh, next awesome app, which is a deselect uh, and Gregory is going to be our presenter. So deselect has actually created an app for the Salesforce marketing cloud platform, which is fully integrated and can leverage all the marketing data you have collected, including any type of data extension and even the data of views. Now, moreover, you can use it for data exploration reports, different types of data analysis, and Salesforce Marketing Cloud Record deduplication. No SQL needed, no Excel skill is needed. And I will hand it over to Gregory uh, uh, for the demo. And Gregory, let me know when you are ready and I will start your timer. Sure, uh, can you hear me? I can. Yeah, then let's start. And your timer starts now. Thanks. So, uh, hey everyone, and I would like to start with uh, the customer success story of Deselect Cambridge University Press. Well, uh, one of uh, well, several marketers in Cambridge University Press can segment their data in just four minutes and twenty seconds. But today we are going to beat their record. So here you can see the Deselect dashboard, and you can see selections that are already done here. We will create a new selection to segment our data in Marketing Cloud without any piece of SQL query. Um, then here I will go through three steps, selection criteria, target definition, and preview. First, I'm selecting that, uh, that extensions that will take part in my selection. So I, I'm choosing accounts, then I'm also adding um, contacts. I drop it over accounts, click save. Here is the place where the magic for non-technical marketers happen. We can define a relationship or a SQL query join based on to uh, data extensions. Then I'm also adding opportunities data extension over accounts. And I, I do here exactly the same. I define an, as, uh, the relationship between two data extensions, inner join, but we also support all types, all types of exclusions and uh, joins, and we click save. Then I can apply some filters. So filters are grouped by names of data extensions. And I would like to find accounts with type prospect and stage open. So uh, here you can see that I used pick lists for stage, but for type, I typed it manually. This feature can be configured in uh, the select administration panel. Then I go to target definition, and here I can use either an existing target data extension like this one, or create a new one on the go. Um, well, I will use an existing one, and to save some time, I will automatically map all the fields from source data extensions to my target data extension. So you see all of them are mapped, but I, I need to take care only of account ID field because it can be found in all three data extensions. I can also define custom values such as dynamic values. This is an analog of case when in SQL queries. Also, I can define some deduplication rules, how to deduplicate data in my target data extension. Finally, I can also choose the data actions such as overwrite, append, or update. Finally, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to the uh, final step preview and I would like to see an example of my uh, data and target data extension. You see how you see here our penguin sliding, which means that the preview is being generated. The preview is designed to see the total number of records you will get in your target data extension to see uh, an example of fields and an example of data to be uh, that can be um, well that can be generated if you run the selection and if uh, the, the data satisfies your criteria. So data is segmented and I'm satisfied with this selection and I can run it. We are done. Awesome, Gregory, your time's up. Thanks. And yeah, the marketing cloud is something a uh, lot of us uh, 
try to get around it and uh, on the basis of all those gdpr and all the regulations uh, marketing cloud is coming up pretty well so great use case gregory uh, best of luck for uh, the uh, voting round thanks so the next app uh, in our list is going to be enabler for excel uh, and a speaker is going to be alexander now connect your Microsoft Excel spreadsheet to a salesforce.com and sync the data between the two, both either manually or automatically. Super fast mass data uploads, one click refresh of all the Salesforce data and all the Salesforce reports linked to your workbook. I will hand it over to Alexander to show how awesome the Enabler for Excel uh, application is. Thank so you. Alexander, let me know when so you are ready and I will stop, start your stopwatch. Uh, I am ready. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. And your time starts now. All right. Uh, I'm going to show so three minutes is uh, a short time, but that is actually is really good. I'm going to show you how much you can actually do with your data uh, from Excel using our tool. So we, this is our new Excel plugin that we have, and I'm going to run a quick query to pull some data from uh, Salesforce right now. I'm going to use uh, opportunities, name, stage name, amount, and close date. And uh, just for the sake of time, I'm going to limit this to just 5,000 records that we're going to pull from Salesforce. And I'm running this. So this uh, runs a query against Salesforce, uh, brings back the data, and populates your Excel. So it's here right now. You can see uh, all the records are in, in Excel. Now I want to change my all 5,000 of them, the amount on, on uh, all the opportunities, just do a data load basically. Uh, I can do that and go to push data, update, quickly check the mappings, uh, which are automatic, and then say all records and run it. So now uh, same, uh, it's just a different direction. The data is grabbed from the Excel and uploaded to Salesforce. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long. Yeah, there you go. It's almost there. Uh, the results are always on the right, one column over. You can see if there's a validation rule, if there's a trigger firing, you always see what happened. You can go back and change your data. Uh, furthermore, you can uh, schedule automatic refreshes or automatic pushes. Uh, let, me, let me show you. So you can do pull and push automatically as long as your document is stored uh, online in Microsoft OneDrive or Microsoft SharePoint. You can just close Excel and keep it running. It's going to run every hour, every week, every month, uh, and do whatever you want it to do, pull data or push data. Uh, so let me see if we actually updated the data correctly. I can go back to pull data and refresh it. This reruns the query and again populates your spreadsheet. Let's see if we have 6,000. Yep, it's 6,000. So it, it all updated. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So I was able to do it in under three, three minutes, uh, 5,000 records. And I still have time to show you something else. We can do formulas. So uh, if you want to run a, an inline formula, cell level, uh, pull something to a single cell in Excel, uh, we, you can do that. So we can run a, a SQL query saying count ID from account, for example. And I can easily bring back the number of accounts in my system, which is one half million right now. Uh, and that's it. I was able to do it under three minutes. Thank you, guys. Awesome, Alexander. You still had eight seconds left, and uh, well, I, it's an awesome use case. Uh, so it literally gives the new life to the Excel sheet user who lives and breathes an Excel sheet, but still at the same time they want to use the Salesforce. So awesome product. Absolutely. And, and to, to take the eight seconds, uh, it works on Mac, Windows, and Excel online everywhere. Awesome. Thank you, Alexander, and best of luck for your uh, voting round. Thank you. Now the next awesome product that we are going to talk about uh, and two more product left. So that this one is known as a bulk object field creator, also known as a BOFC. It is a native force.com application designed to perform tedious Salesforce metadata operation with ease. Now this application saves the user's time by performing monotonous crude metadata operation in bulk with few clicks. It facilitates insightful decision making by exporting and comparing metadata across multiple Salesforce org. So I will hand it over to Mohit 
who is going to show the demo of this product and mohit let me know once you are ready i will start your 3 minute timer okay just uh, thanks to jender just give me a second yep and your timer starts now okay thanks uh, thanks everyone uh, so we constantly receive two kind of feedbacks from users like bofc is a a time saver second it's a decision maker let's see how it works so amit has been asked by his manager to create 200 fields in a object it's going to be a nightmare for him next day he comes the manager comes and he asks him to create 200 more fields in another object or another nightmare third day if he comes and say same thing it's going to be a decision for amit to design from the company because it's, it's a very manual task for him to do it so so to save his time and to do the perform the action in a quick way bfc can help him and save them a lot of time for him let's see how it, how we can do it so let's this is a uh, the bfc application home page once he click on the bulk field creation it's going to land him to the field creation page where he can select out the object in which he wants to create the fields let's take an example the object name is abc damage m right so once you select the object he can select the profiles and the layouts to which he wants to assign the permissions now he can create the fields in three different ways one he can fit, he can use an excel sheet a predefined defined template and he can import the fields second way he can import the fields he can he can manually add the fields in a row like for example he wants to add 10 fields of different field types so it's going to add let's take an example i'm using text right so it's going to add 10 rows in a table the third way is he can import the fields from some other org as well right so once you click on this button it's going to ask him the org from where he wants to import the fields let's take an example i'm having this source org and the object name is account so what i'm going to do is it's going to import the account custom fields from this particular object and it's going to show us in this list so he just has to select the fields rows and click this button done his work is done he's happy and bfc has saved a lot of time for him second uh, how bfc is a decision maker let's take an another use case where amit is managing a big enterprise and he is a security head who manage all the permissions the profiles has permissions the users has to see the data in the system right so how he can have a 360 degree view of the system permissions so in the bfc we have a feature called compare profile so he can go to the compare profiles where he can so where he can uh, select the profiles which he wants to compare let's take example he wants to compare uh, three profiles he wants to compare different kind of properties right he wants to compare he can compare the the profiles across the same org or multiple orgs he wants to compare the managed or unmanaged components so once he has done the selection he can just click on this button and it's going to give him the file in a compare in a comparison Ma'am, format yeah. ma'am sir mohit uh, awesome app uh, very powerful i think uh, it is it could be uh, one of the best friend of the admins or the devops team who do a lot of uh, metadata and object creation and so on so good job uh, you are under 3 minutes and uh, mohit Thank best you. of luck for the voting round sure thanks thanks amit have a good day yeah so now on now now last but not the least app which is a form assembly and we have paul and hanna with us uh now form assembly is an all in one web form building and data collection platform that features an ease to use form builder robust resource integration and strict security and compliance i will hand it over to paul and uh hanna right now hanna is sharing a screen and hanna let me know once you are ready and i will start your 3 minute timer Yep, all good. Let's go. And your timer starts now. Form assembly is a powerful, flexible, and easy to use tool that allows you to build web forms and safely, securely, and quickly collect your data and connect it exactly where you want it to. We have many different use cases and serve many different verticals. And today in just 3 minutes, we're going to build a form for a common use case, a new volunteer registration form. 
underscoring our tool's flexibility, that same tool or same form can also double as a stay in touch form. Using our drag and drop editor, we can quickly add questions for our respondents to answer. We offer a customizable predefined content library that allows us to drop in ready-made and formatted elements to our forms, saving us time and ensuring continuity in our form building. This particular block of content is collecting our volunteer contact information, phone and email, and we can also add a section for checking on meal restrictions for feeding our volunteers, which is going to open up to collect more specific information based on how they've answered this question. And of course, it's also going to collect what time of day is going to work best with their schedule. And with our powerful and flexible connection to Salesforce, we can do web to any Salesforce object, custom or standard, and the connector is bi-directional. Our connector is going to work with any Salesforce product out of the box. After authenticating to our org, we can look up any object and then start mapping fields. Here, Hannah's connecting and mapping to both a standard contact object and also connecting to a custom volunteer object and mapping those relevant fields. But wait, we also need a way to check volunteers in once they get here, and Form Assembly can do that as well. Here, we have a pick list set up to pull values from Salesforce, and with a few simple clicks and without leaving the form builder, Form Assembly can pull a pick list directly from Salesforce and populate the values using a lookup to any object. Here, what you're seeing is the results of a Salesforce query, and we're going to use those to populate the values in the drop down menu, which we're going to see. Let's see it in action. Hannah's going to go ahead and register herself, and as soon as she hits submit, Form Assembly is going to look to see if she's an existing contact and is going to update that record should it exist. If it doesn't, it's going to go ahead and create a new record. She's going to be added to our new volunteer list in Salesforce, and then when she arrives, she's going to go ahead and check herself in like so. But wait, I actually also want to volunteer, and after I registered, I got this QR code in my email, and if Hannah and I were actually together, she could use that to check me in. And what you'll see is as we refresh, we're both going to be registered, checked in, and ready to go. Our form has been built, our data has been collected, distributed, and organized the way we need it to be with FormAssembly, the leading web form platform for you. Awesome, Paul. So you still had 14 seconds left, uh, but that's great. You wrapped up your demo within three minutes. And uh, awesome. It's like we practiced it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, best, so best of luck all the participants and uh, best of luck all the presenters. Participants, I hope you took all the notes because we have Kahoot at the end. Before uh, uh, opening up the voting one point what one thing i would like to share with all of us right most of us on the call are either admins or the developers right it doesn't make a sense to reinvent the wheel when the app is already there already tested and uh, already tested and trusted by thousands of enterprise orgs and everyone right so i would say this is one of the integral part of becoming a developer admin and architect to know what are the, your options available on app exchange so I would like to thank all of our six App Exchange presenters today, and I will share my screen. And uh, Amit, uh, control to you. Can you share your screen? Yes, I can. Do you want me to go to the next slide? Yeah. So okay. it's time for polling. So yeah, I'm please. sharing the link on the slide. You have to go. So I also put it the uh, link into the chat window. You can use this one. Go ahead and do the voting. We are giving you 10 minutes. So right now it's at 10.31 from my side. I will be stop the polling at 10, uh, uh, 10.40. Awesome. So yeah, everyone, all participants, please go on this link uh, and give the rating to the best app that you think today uh, made your list. Okay. Meanwhile, while everybody is voting, uh, if you have any question, please post in the chat now and we have uh, our presenters who would be able to answer those questions. Good job. Like I can see 103% are joined us live and almost 73 voting is already done. 70, yeah, 75 votes done. Team, every, everyone, go ahead, cast your vote. Every vote is important. It every can vote. help to win your uh, uh, your favorite app today. 
So, uh, Amir, do we have any question on the chat? Okay, we don't right now. To break the tie. <laughs> Come on, guys, it's tie right now. We, 101 yeah. mode we already got. I wish we can select uh, two, but we can only select one. It's a tie. <laughs> so, so, Amit, question to you. And maybe I don't know. What would you do uh, in case of tie? We need to reach out to Apex Change. <laughs> So anyone on the call, have you seen any uh, demo jam uh, ended up as a tie? Anyone? We have still five more minutes left. I yeah, can see yeah. somebody is leading. Some yeah, other yeah. also leading. Three, yeah. So uh, Amit. Uh, one last minute, all the best. Everyone is excited. So one minute, right? Yep, one minute left. And I can see that most of the guys already did the voting, so. Last 30 seconds. There is a big fight going on with two apps. Last 10 seconds. I mean, you can stop the voting page, right? Okay, yeah. So once the time's up, yeah, let's go ahead and stop okay. the voting. Okay. We have our winner. And can okay. you give me the name? Yeah, I will. Have... Yeah. What is the difference? Only one vote. Everyone, okay. every vote matter. Kitendra, so, okay. do you want me to share the screen? Yes. Okay. So anyone, so before I share my screen, can anyone guess who is the winner? Chat is open. Let's make it a little bit interesting. Any guess? Can anyone say what is the voting difference between the first and the second runner up? Okay, so here it goes. And uh, winner is three hundred and sixty SMS app. Congratulations, team! And sharing picks just missed by one vote. Oh no! <laughs> Once again, it, it, but, it's, it's the third time. It's the third time. <laughs> Jinder, can but, you share the result in the screen? Am, am, am I not sharing my screen? No. Okay. okay, okay. I thought I'm sharing my screen. Here is my screen. Only one vote. No way. Wow. But I will say, uh, Everyone did excellent job explaining explaining their app. There was a time around uh, four app had almost tie. So I will say good job, uh, everyone, all the presenters, uh, and good luck for all your next app exchange demo jam. Thank you, everyone, all the participants, and. Uh,